Well, every age has an iconic photograph, an image that seems to capture everything about a moment. Here's one that says a lot about the time we're living in. It's a tweet from California Senator Kamala Harris. She's running for president. Attached is a picture of her laughing with her friend Stacey Abrams of Georgia. Quote, there's no better person to showcase our country's strengths and speak the truth after the State of the Union, Harris writes of Abrams. Senator Harris's social media consultant must have been proud of that tweet, and you can see why. It's the perfect distillation of every stale cliche our ruling class uses to celebrate itself, packed into 280 characters or less. But then, a sharp-eyed Twitter user noticed something about the picture. Zoom in a little bit to the left in the background. Behind the two laughing politicians is a reminder that this country has changed quite a lot from the period 50 years ago that permanently shaped the sensibilities of our baby boom leaders. There's a man there. He's lying on a bench unconscious. There's a can of malt liquor underneath him. There are thousands of men like this right now in every big American city. And maybe that's why Harris and Abrams didn't notice him. He's just a feature of the landscape. This is the world they created, and they're happy with it. Well, American politics is increasingly haunted by a strange new specter, the woke billionaire. They got a ton of money, but otherwise they sound a lot like socialists. How does that work exactly? Venture capitalist Nick Hanauer recently declared that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is at the very beating heart of American politics, and he's for that. Watch. It's easy to call what AOC is doing as far lefty, but nothing could be further from the truth. When you advocate for economic policies that benefit the broad majority of citizens, that's true centrism. What Howard Schultz represents, the centrism he represents, is really just trickle-down economics, tax cuts for rich people, deregulation for powerful people, and wage suppression and benefit cuts for everyone else without the overt racism. He is not the centrist. AOC is the centrist. Hmm. Ooh, it's woke billionaire versus woke billionaire. Meanwhile, there's Tom Steyer, he uses his vast wealth, a lot of which he got from fossil fuels, to organize and lead impeachment rallies. He may be the wokest. I will be dedicating 100% of my time, effort, and resources to one cause, working for Mr. Trump's impeachment and removal from office. Start impeachment now. Now the impeachment question has reached an inflection point. 100% for impeachment and insist that this president be impeached and removed. So when billionaires start endorsing socialist policies, call me skeptical, but you think maybe there's a scam afoot? How are they benefiting from this? You know they are. Author and columnist Mark Stein has some ideas about that, and he joins us tonight. What's going on here, Mark Stein? Well, I think uh, the woke billionaire is a phenomenon of our time. Uh, the way you get rich now is not the way you got rich in the days of the... Uh, 19th century robber barons in the Gilded Age. It's possible to do it now uh, while being ever more disconnected from the concerns of ordinary people. So these woke billionaires, I think, are a lot like uh, rock stars. Uh, you know, Bono, for example, goes on about debt forgiveness uh, for Africa, uh, but when he wanted to save money, he moved his music publishing firm from Dublin to Amsterdam for the lower taxes. He doesn't move it to Wagadougou and give a big <laughs> injection into the African economy. And yeah. I think that's actually the way these guys are. They, uh, they understand that uh, they're in a world in which striking attitudes that preserve their own power base is actually uh, more important uh, than, than anything else. Well, exactly. And they're smart enough, mm. because they are smart by and large, that's how they got rich, right. to understand that there, there's a lot of roiling politics right beneath the surface, and, and the yeah. main theme going forward is going to be populist economics, and guys like them could get crushed. So do you think they're, yeah. this is a defensive move? Yes, I think it is. We have declining uh, social mobility in the United States, which is a tragedy. Uh, yeah, and we have a, across the planet uh, a, a huge rise in the growth of billionaires uh, controlling a small group of about 2,000 billionaires controlling an ever greater share of the, the world's wealth. And it's easy to strike attitudes at home uh, while then taking advantage of tax loopholes abroad. So, you exactly. know, Google doing the old uh, 
double Irish, as they call it, uh, by routing its money uh, from one Irish company to another and then into a British tax haven like, uh, like Bermuda. The whole point uh, is to actually uh, create a world in which there's a, an elite at the top and a vast mass underneath and not a lot of, uh, and the escalator to get from the bottom to the top uh, is running ever slower and with an ever uh, uh, fewer people able to get on it. So don't you think, though, there should be some standard? I mean, if you're a billionaire who's going to go on MSNBC and call for revolution, shouldn't we get to see your tax returns and assess the tax havens that you're using to prevent paying your fair share? I mean, isn't that sort of a minimum requirement for this? Well, I think actually the, the, on the left, there's a huge acceptance now that the rules they want to apply to others uh, don't apply to them. So if you made your money in, say, coal or construction, and you want to keep your your uh, and you want to keep that money in the Cayman Islands or Bermuda or the Channel Islands, you're yes. a bad person. But if you're, you know, you don't even have to be a businessman. If you're the Southern Poverty Law Center, uh, and you you have that ridiculous name, and yet you have billions salted. Uh, in, as I said, British uh, colony tax havens, then that's okay. The, the left has a high degree of tolerance because they actually, they actually think it's different when they do it. That's their, basic, uh, that's their basic view of it. And I think that's true with, with these guys. I mean, everyone knows you can salt all your money away in these little Irish Bermudan uh, tax loopholes, yes. not pay tax here, but still get invited to the Obama White House uh, and be standing between Obama and Bill Clinton. It won't affect that. Well, there's never been a more hypocritical age or a smarter mm. analyst of it than Mark Stein. Thank you for that. Thanks a lot, Tucker.